the other problem. This is a huge problem. You aren't documenting the boundary resolution. You know how many Alta surveys I've seen in the last year from other companies that have no town property corner monuments on there? Like, you get the map, it's got a dark dashed line around the boundary, and that's it. Like, maybe they give you some bearings and distances. You should have your license for a book for that. You have to tell me how you put that boundary together. Right? Remember your audience, okay? The whole reason they hired an expert is because they're trying to figure out if there might be any potential problems with the boundary, and then you don't give them an explanation of how you put the thing together or if there could be alternate solutions to where the lines are at. If there's a potential alternate solution to the location of the property line on your survey, does the title officer and the lender deserve to know that? Yes. Absolutely they do. And it'd be nice if you told them, I think this is maybe a tenth or I think it's ten feet. They need to know that. Right? How many surveys do you do that could possibly have an alternate solution on the boundary? Like, I'd say my hit rate's close to 80%. So how do you show that, though? Is it like survey area. Put it on the map. Put a survey area. I, put a, I have boundary resolution notes on my map explaining what I held. What monuments did I find? Which ones did I hold? Which ones did I reject? Did I hold record? Did I hold... Did I prorate? Did I proportion? Did I... I do, I, that. I do that, too, but it's like you're saying the line... You're actually saying the line could be over here two cents. I order. Like, it's like there's information that so, uh, so our uh, survey Yeah, no, you're, yeah. Antonio's going to make me go late, but that's okay. I did a survey in Sunnyvale on a data center, an Alta survey. And uh, when, when I went out, you can't just survey your parcel, right? You got to survey the adjoiners to see if you got any gaps and overlaps. So I went out and did some measurements on the parcel to the south, and I found out in the record there was a two foot overlap on the south line of my parcel. What do you think a data center in Sunnyvale is worth? Okay? Now, I had an, they gave me an office survey from like five years before. The guy didn't say anything about the overlap. He probably didn't know it was there because he didn't check. So I put a note on my survey. There was a little leader call out on that line, see note 10. And note 10 said, hey, based on the record dimensions of my parcel and the parcel to the south and these found monuments, there's potentially a two-foot overlap on this line. Now look, here's the thing. At the end of the day, the client may not care. They didn't care about that two feet because what was in the two feet? Yeah, it was a wall and some bushes. They're like, yeah, $10 million, you know, $10 million data center, we're not worried about the bushes. I'm not, like, but they have the right to decide whether or not they want to accept that risk. They can't do that if you don't tell them. Here's the other thing that drives me nuts. I get other people's office surveys, by the way, I got three of them sitting on my desk right now, they're going to the board. I just haven't had time. I'm turning these guys into the board. You get an office survey, it's got a line on it with some, with some bearings and distances. Are those record or measured or calculated? All you see is a bearing and a distance. What, is that? what does that mean? Does that match the D? Does it not match the D? How do you tell? I see this. This is the mistake I see more than any other mistake. It's not. It's not in the spec. But what the spec says is you have to meet the standard of care in your jurisdiction. And I would bet if I had Rick Moore in the room and I asked him, he'd tell you, if you do that on your Alta, if you show a dark line with a boundary and no found laws and no idea how you put it together, you don't tell me if it's record or measure or how it relates to the grand deed, he's probably going to say you're negative. And if even if Rick Moore, if my client's next door and there's a two-foot overlap, I will sue you and I will get on the stand. Like, I get paid to get on the stand and roast guys that don't do their job. One, two, two. And, I, and I'll do it. When is the record survey period? That, that's where I would say we, we would not go necessarily, you know, 10 different brackets for all different records, but we will absolutely follow up the record survey. Yeah, no, I, and, I, and I'm, not saying, I'm not saying you have to put all the record on there, but if you hold records, you better tell me you hold record, and you better tell me what record you have. Right. Right? So, the building's on fire. Hopefully it's not. All right. You're still a rock star. I wish for myself to take a multiply and be at 9 o'clock. That's me. Okay, here's the last one. Yep. You aren't performing a least squares adjustment. If you don't do a least squares adjustment, you do not have a land title survey, period. This is probably the second most common mistake I see. 
You get guys running around with an RTN in an urban canyon doing radio ties to some center line monuments and filing all the surveys. That does not meet the spec. If I'm ever on the other side of a lawsuit from you and you do that, I am going to roast you. And like, look, I don't care how good of a job you did on the rest of the survey, if you screw that up, how am I going to make you look stupid? I'm going to make you look stupid. And, it's, and some guys will say, oh, well, you only have to do an adjustment once with that equipment, and then you never have to do it again because you know how good your equipment is. That is not what the spec says. The spec says every friggin' time you do a land tower survey, you got to do a least first adjustment. You can't do that in CAD, folks. That means if you're in the land title survey business, you better have some least squares adjustment software in your office, or you can't do land title surveys. And I put a note on my survey that says, I did a least squares adjustment. Here's my measurement error at the 95% confidence level. I do or do not meet the maximum in the spec. There's a maximum. Does anybody know what it is? 700s at 950. Yeah, so whatever. Yeah, right. It's 700. Foot. Foot. Yeah, so 700s. Here's the thing. I've tested this with RTN in an urban area. You can't meet 700s at 95% of RTN. You can't. You gotta do fast data if you have a gun out. And I bet you can't make it with an on site RTK base most of the time. Uh, now, you don't have to meet 700s. You don't have to meet it, but if you don't meet it, you have to put a note on your survey that says why you didn't meet it. And I would hate to put a note on my survey that says, I didn't meet the 95% spec at 700 because I was lazy and I wanted to use R2K and not a total station. Because that would be a stupid note to put on that. I guarantee you there's guys in there. They do not do this. Now, why do you think they make you do a least squares adjustment? And they don't say very much. They don't say what has to be included. I think it's your control and your corners. Your control points in your corner. It does say all boundary. It does say all boundary, I think, yeah. It's not your total shots, but you gotta do your control and your boundary. But they don't say much else other than you gotta do one and it's gotta be at 700 to 95%. So like look, what they're trying to do is they're trying to weed out the chaff thing, right? But like, it doesn't work because you're telling Yeah. That. But like look, what they're trying to do is they're trying to prevent the guys. You have these guys in your area, I've got them all over the bay area. They go out, they find two center line logs, they turn the record bearing, they set two corners and then file a corner record, right? They're trying to keep those guys from doing land title surveys. There's a certain level of sophistication you got to have to do a least squares adjustment. That's why they put it in the spec. Okay? I'm running out of time because all these other people are like, why is this guy still talking? I put together a timeline for your project. I started by reasoning that anything I don't understand is easy to do. Phase one, perform an accurate land title survey of the subject parcel time allowed, six minutes. Right? Okay. So, I totally ran out of all our time, but there's other stuff we can talk about. We won't. Encroachments on authorized use, gaps and overlaps in the record, record survey triggers. Do you have to place monuments? When should you? Physical versus legal access. Non filable easements, non applicable easements, boilerplate exceptions in the title report. I'm going to talk really fast and say two things. If there's exceptions in your title report that don't apply to your parcel, have the title company take it out. You are protecting your client. You owe that to them. Okay? Make the title company do their job. Okay? The last thing I wanted to say is if you're doing an office survey, you probably need to be doing a record survey. Nine times out of ten. If you work at a firm that does office surveys and you can count on one hand the number of records of surveys you filed in the last ten years, you are in violation of state law. Okay? And this is the crazy part. It's really easy. To, this, this trigger is easy. It's either on a record map or it's not. If it's not on a record map and you do a land title survey, there is no gray area. You have to file. What if it's a lot line adjustment? You have to file. Mm -hmm. If it's on a lot line adjustment and it's not on a map, that's why I think it's stupid to do lot line adjustments without a record survey. So let me explain. If I own a parcel that's on a map and I do a lot line adjustment and the city doesn't, well, county doesn't require a new map, now I've got a parcel on the D that has never been surveyed. If you do an office survey of that, you have to file. Well, I didn't set mine. I don't care. You have to follow. I'm going to give you another example. If you got a parcel that's on a map and the city or county or Caltrans or East Bay Mud comes in and takes a 20 foot strip in fee on one side of that parcel and you go in to survey what's left, you have to file. That parcel in its current configuration is not on a record map. And like, I'm just warning everybody right now if you come to Central California and I catch you, I'm turning you into the board. I don't even call people anymore. I just turn them in because I'm tired of it. 
do your record of surveys. Just put them in, price them in there. Just do them. That is the number one problem I have in my area right now. People that do, good companies do land title surveys and do not buy. And here's the sucky part. I follow the law. So if you do a land title survey five years ago and don't file, and I come in and do a follow-up land title survey, and you didn't file, what does that mean I got to do? I got to file because you didn't file. So the guys that follow the law get pushed out of business by the guys that break the law. And that's why I'm just turning people into the board from now on. Okay? Rob? As the liaison for CLSA for about the last five years, I believe not filing a record of survey is the number one enforcement action against licensed There you go. So just do it. So Antonio, did I answer your question? Yeah, you are new. You're just turning the pot. But that's obviously that's why I'm asking that's your opinion. Is there like people have had their licenses taken away from if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, I encourage you to call the enforcement unit at the board. And just now, I'm not telling you to be scared, just call and ask. Call and ask Rick. Yeah, call and ask Rick. Hey, I'll send you your So they, they just had a report come out where someone actually lost their license. Yeah, I know in one case too, but so yeah. what, what kind of. By, what, what, by the other words, suspended. So all you want is the ALTA, and that's all the board needs to like, do is success. Okay, so here's the, here's the, is the next speaker here? Am I making something like that? Okay, see, they did that on purpose. They did that on purpose because you can go get coffee if you want. Don't feel like you guys need it. Okay, so here, here's why surveyors are stupid. Okay. We're stupid. And I'll tell you why we're stupid. You go and break the law, do a land title survey, and don't file. And now there's written proof with your signature and seal that you broke the law. And what's the first thing the freaking realtor gives me when I get that job? The old Alta. Like, how dumb can you? That's like robbing a bank and standing there in front of the security camera and waving your hands in front of it. With a gun. With a gun! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like those guys, your wallet. Yeah, sure like those guys deserve to get busted. Right? Now, look, so, so let me explain. There's other triggers you can hit that are much harder to prove. So, material discrepancy, there's some judgment, professional judgment there, you know, change in the record. Like, there's some other things that are gray, you can look your way. Dude, you file, you do a survey of a parcel that's not on a record map, you're, well, just, you're guilty. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Just don't show any dimensions to your file. Yeah, there's no gray area there, guys. You're guilty. And if I find you doing that in my neck of the woods, I'm turning you in. I'm not even giving you a phone call. I've got a company, a well known company, they're at this conference. I have three of their surveys from the last five years, land title surveys, all parcels not on a record map, no records of survey. And I've had to file two surveys. I've come behind them twice, and I've had to file. I called Dave about it. Dave and I talked. Dave said, turn them in. I'm going to roast them, and I just don't care. And don't go down to Southern California and do it there, because Dave will roast you. Right, Dave? Yeah. Okay. So look, if, I'm like, if you're doing 12 Alta surveys a year, you ought to be filing 10 records of survey a year. And if you're not, you're breaking them off. Yeah, so if, you're, if your property description is more than two lines, you're filing a record of survey. Yeah. yeah. Parcel A of this map. Okay, I'm done. All right, I'm done. Dave, Dave and uh, Evan want to talk to you guys. Thanks for coming and listening, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you.